So I want to bring it around. You get welcome to try it yourself. But I want to know, kind of also, like, think about what it is, which one you're going to kind of think to try. So it's rice cakes with kelp and then just kelp chips. So you can try what you want. It's not the most appetizing to me. And when we think about what we plan to do with the kelp and how we can extend this idea of sustainability, this gives me pause. So we're going to look at that today. And a challenge I'm going to give to you is how can you create a sustainable product with your kelp? So as we look at this friendly earth, we want to like start thinking about what is a sustainable business. So we talked about what's So here at Drinkwater School, our middle school students, both 6th and 7th grade, are working with the Island Institute in Hurricane Island to explore the possibilities of aquaculture, especially kelp aquaculture, as a future business opportunity and way to sustain growth in food for our growing population. There you go, yep, so you're going to... Yeah. It's, you know, a year-long project for the kids where they're collecting the spores and growing them in a nursery that we had in the classroom and then going out to Hurricane where they have a site for aquaculture and seeding a line. We created an experimental design so the kids are looking at kind of research questions. So our experiment was can you have too much baby kelp? So our control group was we just wrapped our kelp line once with the seeded line and our experimental side we double wrapped it which brought a couple of problems that we had to encounter while on the boat doing it, yeah. but there was problem solving going with that, so that also sense of perseverance, and what does real science look like? As scientists are out in the world, nothing kind of goes as planned as it was on paper, and the kids experience that and work through it. Completely deployed, you guys. Today we went out in some boats and we planted our kelp strands in the ocean and we're going to come back in April to get the kelp that's grown. Mm -hmm. To check it out? Yeah. What's really exciting about putting the kelp out is that, so it's like we grew kelp in a tank in our classroom and now we're putting it out near an island so that we can harvest it at the end and possibly sell it to the co-op and it's really exciting to eat something that we grew in the ocean. We spent a little bit of time looking at what our food miles were and you were generating kind of uh, menus of things that have the shortest distance that those materials had to fly. Well think about with your greenhouse, you know we're talking about tens of feet away that your produce is growing and with the kelp out in Penobscot Bay, it's about 12 miles. And then the kids are going to collect the harvest in April. So we'll go back out to Hurricane, we'll pull the lines and take in some of the kelp. And it ties in really closely with the work that this class did with writing a grant to the school board last year to have the greenhouse put in. So they came up with a proposal, they did site planning, they went before the board, they presented, they had a written document that went to the community. and community voted and kind of like provided the funds for the greenhouse which was put up two weeks ago and so it's all new but the kids as part of that proposal said that they were going to be able to offset the costs of the greenhouse with something they could sell so your job today is to see how you can do this and your, your challenge is to do this with your kelp and your greenhouse because part of your grant proposal for the greenhouse was that you said you were going to offset the operating costs with things you grew in it. So let's see if you can do that. So my challenge to you is that you create this herb blend. So I have herbs that are they're dried and they're all herbs that we could grow in the greenhouse. And I have powdered kelp. So I took kelp, dried it, ground it up, and so it's in a powder form. So how can you take those two that have small environmental impacts, that have low food miles, and create a product that people are willing to spend money on. And how can you use some of that idea of assertions and reasoning and evidence to promote that product, to convince somebody that they should go buy it, that they should taste it? Liam. If we have a good one, are we actually going to like, go and sell it? 
That would be my plan, yes. Because you guys said to the school board, we will sell something to make money. Your job is to create that mix and have a recorded recipe that's, that you can replicate. So you have a clear idea of what you put in and how much. I want you to come up with a product name for it. If there's time, I'd love to have you have a logo and a business name. That's a big, that's a huge challenge. But I think that we can get well on our way. So we have to know the chef. We have the kelp. So what else should we put in there? We taste the kelp. So should we? I think we have three. We can try three different things. I think we should do basil, salt, and garlic. I'll try it again. Is it good? Is it good? It's amazing. Yeah. Or touch on the idea of a healthy community. So, it has a stronger taste, but it's not sweet anymore. The sweetness is not that good. Sure. Yeah. And you can taste well, you know like salt. Salt is that a sweet? I think I'm going to try to make it more sweet. I think put less pepper. Less sweet, but not less. Like, we don't have it. Then I already know that you're going to be able to it. Yeah, it's nice. It does still. It comes. But it's there. So you swallow it, like, oh, it's good. Yeah, but in here, was there any kelp at all? Any what? Kelp. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, how, how much kelp at all? Yeah, I had a kelp, definitely. How much kelp you start was with the idea of starting small. You're starting off with something that here in this classroom is successful. Then you can look at the school community. How successful can you make it there? A larger town community, Union has 1,500 like people, like how can you get them to start buying it and then you can expand up from there. But you gotta start small. You know, lesson we had today was a culmination of that. Like how can we put the kelp together with the greenhouse and come up with something that's unique, a, a product that we can sell from here that is local, that is healthy for the environment as they saw through all of their studies of photosynthesis and bioremediation and sustainable growth and put that into something they could sell. And how can they turn that into a sustainable business? Something that kind of like is a spark of, for the future of where these kids and their generation maybe need to take aquaculture. Um, this product is called Flavor of the Sea. Um, basically, on the back of the product, it would have like why um, aquaculture is good. And so Ranger would read off what the back would say. OK. So this helps sustain our oceans, and only 12 million miles is arable for farming on land, and there's like a lot more in the ocean that's arable for farming. We found farming. that um, we were going to make it for chicken because it didn't really stick on popcorn that well. Apparently we made it stick on popcorn now, but um, it didn't, so that's why we have the little, that's supposed to be a chicken, that's a chicken on our logo. The product name is Ocean Spice and it has probably 50% kelp in it. So it has a lot of protein. Our company name is called Uprising Kelp and we gave our spices different names um, quite like this table. Um, our spice name is called New Generation. Once you eat it, a couple seconds after you get like a spice all over your mouth. And for people who don't really like spice, I don't suggest this because it's very, very spicy. We yeah. added a lot of kelp to this because we really wanted it to seem like it was like from like the ocean and not just a bunch of other spices. This combination, I feel, would do great in the business world. Learning that sustainability is like to make sure that we take enough for ourselves and leave it for future generations. And I was thinking that kelp is really sustainable because you just put it in the, in the water and it just grows and you don't have to add like pesticides and anti-bugs or whatever they put on it. I think that it's a really good idea to go in for the future, especially since it's using water that we didn't already use and that it's there waiting for us. 
it's kind of going towards Ranger's idea of like who's the customer is getting this, but also how are you saving things for the future? You have a sustainable business, something that people would want to do. How can we plan for our future through this work? To be able to bring that to the classroom to these kids, these like opportunities to get hands-on experience with these ideas and with all the connections that happen through science and social studies and reading and math, because the world is complex and they get to live it and see it and that none of these things they're studying are separate, that they're all together and it's fun and it's really intriguing and it's really engaging and the lesson you saw today just shows like how on fire they are to have power to try to make change and try to have some control over their future.